This lesson will be an overview of the math section on the SHSAT. All right, let's look at the math section. So let's read through the instructions. Solve each problem. Select the best answer from the choices given. Mark the letter of your answer on the answer sheet. You can do your figuring in a test booklet or on paper provided by the proctor. Do not make any marks on your answer sheet other than filling in your answer choices. Okay, some important notes. Formulas and definitions of mathematical terms and symbols are not provided. Diagrams other than graphs are not necessarily drawn to scale. Do not assume any relationship in a diagram unless it is specifically stated or can be figured out from the information given. So for example, if you see a triangle like this, this may look like it's 45 degrees, but it doesn't necessarily have to be 45 degrees. Assume that a diagram is on one plane, unless the problem specifically states that it is not. So just, that means two-dimensional. Graphs are drawn to scale. Okay, that's important. Graphs are drawn to scale. Unless stated otherwise, you can assume relationships according to appearance. For example, on a graph, lines that appear to be parallel can be assumed to be parallel. Likewise, for concurrent lines, straight lines, collinear points, right angles, etc. But this is for graphs. Then we want to reduce all fractions to lowest terms. So here are some sample questions. Um, again, I want to point out this is an old test, so there are not going to be five answer choices. There are only going to be four answer choices. And uh, questions can go through a, a number of different um, topics, such as uh, arithmetic, algebra, and geometry. Let's look at the grid in sample questions for the SAT. So solve each problem. On the answer sheet, write your answer in the boxes at the top of the grid. Start on the left side of each grid. Print only one number or symbol in each box. Do not leave a box blank in the middle of an answer. Under each box, fill in a circle that matches the number or symbol you wrote above. Do not fill in a circle under an unused box. So you see questions similar to the ones in um, multiple choice uh, section, except here we have to actually find the answer ourselves and then fill it in. So let's look at how to fill in the answer choices. If the answer is 5, we're going to put it in the first line or the first column where we could write a number. We're going to write the number 5 and then bubble in the number 5. If we have a larger number, we're still going to start at the first column with numbers, 3, 8 and then bubble in the 3, the 0, and the 8. Uh, it's worth pointing out that an answer can be negative. There is a, a spot to bubble in the negative. If we get the answer 0 0.78, we can write 0 0.78 or 0 0.78 as shown here. Okay, let's look at what not to do. So we always want to start at the left, the first column, which this student did. But for 418, the student skipped a column. Okay, This 8 should be here, and then this should be bubbled in down here. Okay, Do not skip. So this would be wrong. Also for 18, okay, do not start in the middle. Start here on the left. Don't add a zero in front, don't add a zero after. It should just be 18 and then 18 bubbled in. Then also, the number nine, for example, just start with the nine here and bubble the nine. Do not write zeros in front of it. 